Because of its size, diversity, democracy and history, it is exceedingly difficult to compare India with any other nation. But this becomes even more challenging when the comparison is made with Pakistan, a nation which in many dimensions appears to function quite differently than India. As soon as the Prime Minister of India had ended his speech at the UN General Assembly, comparisons were quickly made on Twitter, evaluating his speech with the speech that had been delivered earlier by the Pakistani Prime Minister. As usual, in a country like India, with differing political viewpoints and ideologies, the importance of self-criticism and self-questioning cannot be ignored. But some Pakistani netizens appear to be focusing mainly on two points from the Indian Prime Minister's speech. First, the mention of open defecation in the Indian Prime Minister's speech. And second, by claims that by not mentioning Pakistan in its UNJ speech, India showed cowardice. Well, to some people it may appear that Pakistan was not mentioned in the speech that the Indian PM delivered, but a closer second look can also reveal something else. In the Indian PM's speech, the word terrorism was mentioned, and it is well understood that whenever India mentions terrorism on global platforms, quite often it is pointing towards Pakistan. As far as the problem of open defecation is concerned, I do not think that addressing one's own embarrassing problems is a bad thing. India could only improve its poor sanitation situation when it had decided to acknowledge it. Today, India claims that it has made remarkable progress. It can even be said that India's experience can be useful for a country like Pakistan, which itself suffers from the problem of open defecation. Yes, multiple reports have revealed that millions of Pakistanis do not have access to a decent toilet, forcing many of them to defecate in the open. On the UNJ platform, India openly said that it was ready to learn from the world and was also ready to share its experiences with other nations. Also, it shouldn't be forgotten that despite the animosity between the two nations, on multiple occasions, India has helped Pakistan in the past. For example, in the year 2005, when Pakistan was struck by an earthquake, India offered 25 million US dollars to the Pakistani government as cash assistance, along with 15 million US dollars in in-kind contributions from both private and governmental sources. In year 2010, when Pakistan suffered from massive floods, India offered 25 million US dollars to Pakistan so that it could help the flood victims. As an important medical tourism destination, the pharmacy of the world also saves the lives of many patients who come from the West, Pakistan, China or elsewhere. Indeed, Pakistan shouldn't feel embarrassed to learn or take help from India. As far as the problem of open defecation is concerned, we should also understand that showing genuine concern for a given problem in one nation and negatively stereotyping the entire nation for that problem are two different things. Yes, the problem of open defecation can be embarrassing, but even America has the problem of open defecation and is also trying to resolve it. Human feces are spotted on San Francisco streets regularly and not all get reported. Among the reported ones, just in 2018, there were more than 28,000 poop sightings. It shouldn't come as a surprise that some people in Western nations are realizing that India's experience can be useful for their nation too. An example of this was seen in the UK, when a London headquartered newspaper was attempting to take inspiration from India's initiatives, which might help the UK tackle its massive homelessness problem. Coming back to the speeches at the UNGA, several netizens in India were highlighting the contrast in how Pakistan's own newspapers covered the speeches of the two leaders. They noted that a big part of the Pakistani Prime Minister's speech was focused on India, and on the other hand, his Indian counterpart delivered a speech that didn't appear to be primarily focused on one country and highlighted several valid points. But then it doesn't mean that one should ignore the concern that the Pakistani Prime Minister showed about environmental protection. From a big picture perspective, perhaps we humans are more interconnected and interdependent than we have ever been before, and the present situation also serves as a great opportunity to understand each other and remove our differences and misunderstandings. If many Pakistani netizens ridicule India, then it is also true that many Indian netizens go to extreme lengths to ridicule Pakistan. It can even be said that it is only a waste of their creativity and time. A better utilization of their creative energy will only benefit their own countries. India needs more creative minds, as many problems in India are still unresolved and those which appear to be resolved 
still need more attention. For example, in terms of quality of sanitation-related infrastructure and in terms of bringing about behavioral changes in people, India still has a long way to go. A few months before the coronavirus-induced lockdown, when I was doing a road trip in rural India, I struggled to find clean and properly functioning toilets in many villages that I went to. Only those who acknowledge and accurately diagnose their problems without overestimating or underestimating them are more likely to find the most effective solutions to fix them. India's brave admission of its embarrassing problems, its track record in serving the global community, its fundamental philosophy of universal familyhood are some of the key factors that make it a deserving contender to play a bigger role in global policy and decision-making. See you again.